Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is MIG Welding Tips geared toward helping scouts get their uh, Boy Scout Merit Badge for welding. So the first thing, just a quick overview here, the first thing is do your initials on a piece of plate. And the second exercise is patting beads on a piece of metal, covering one side or both sides with a whole bunch of beads. The third thing is a square groove butt joint welded from both sides. I'm using 11 gauge metal here for all this stuff. It's just eighth inch thick. And then the fourth thing is a T-joint welded both sides. And then the last thing would be a lap joint tacked up and welded both sides. So that's a pretty good little uh, kickstart for anybody wanting to do some MIG welding or teach themselves how. So it's not just for Boy Scouts, but it's geared, to boy, it's geared toward Boy Scouts. All right, some tips on how not to weld. I forgot to turn on the shielding gas here, so fortunately I was filming it, and you see what happens there. It's a very porous, very weak weld. And here, nowhere near enough wire feed speed. See that wire can't even get down to the puddle before it just balls up and almost melts back to the tip. Now I'm going to gradually crank up the wire feed speed here. See how that's just rattling, melting back, rattling. There's no real force, no real penetration. That's getting closer. Might be good on some thin sheet metal. Not good enough for padding this quarter inch thick piece of tube in here. Now you hear that sound? See how much better that sounds than the rest of it? That's kind of what you're looking for. Now it's just a little high. You can see how the metal mounds up there at the beginning. This is probably doable for some stuff and this is this is too high. The wire is stuttering, kind of shunting out in the puddle stabbing in there and this is entirely too high where it's just stabbing and then just kind of exploding violently with, with a lot of spatter but before you go adjusting your wire feed speed thinking it's way off make sure you have a good ground you can really chase your tail if you don't have a good ground and just thinking your wire feed speeds off all right here's another thing stick out too long see that got some porosity in there for the gas not getting down there but that's not the only problem a long stick out just kind of weakens the arc force Right, there's many other things, but those are the main things. All right, let's go back to the uh, exercises here. The first thing, again, we're going to use a piece of soapstone and make initials on a piece of metal. And we're going to trace the initials with weld bead. Now, I would advise saving this till last because you're going to do a lot of welding, a lot of weld beads, and you're, you'll be a lot better at making a decent looking set of initials than you would be if you try this first. And you may even want to do it first and last, just kind of a before and after. But this is something you might want to have on your, on your desk as a paperweight 30 years from now. So you might want to just wait till last to make it look good. All right, the next thing is cover a small plate with weld beads. The book says, the pamphlet says, a 3x3 three by, three by quarter inch thick approximately uh, piece of metal. But I think counselors are going to have to have, use a little uh, discretion and leeway because just the availability of metals, people aren't going to, you know, be in a welding school all the time and have pre-cut metal. So here's just a piece of three inch square tubing and uh, it's about quarter inch wall thickness. Serves the purpose just fine for covering an area with weld beads. So I put one on the very edge first. Try to get it halfway straight. The straighter you start off, the straighter you, you'll end up. And I'm just overlapping them here. I don't think this, the requirements of the uh, the merit badge pamphlet require you to overlap halfway just cover the plate with with beads but the idea on and when you're in welding school is to pad beads and stack them exactly halfway where there are no real deep valleys or anything like that so uh, might as well shoot for shoot for something I like to make little a little series of kinda of like small circles or overlapping cursive ease whatever you want to call it it kinda of helps me to uh, gives me a, an even travel speed, puts a little ripple in the weld, and it's just kind of like my go-to method for MIG welding. But it's not necessary. And when, you, when you're when uh, you messing with this thing, it's got these little islands of silicon on it, and they are hot, and they will pop off and get in your eyes. So keep your safety glasses on. Okay. All right, the next things, a little overview of the next things. is a square groove butt joint welded from both sides and a T-joint welded both sides and a lap joint welded both sides. So I'm going to tack all of these up 
just to kind of just conserve a little bit of metal, I'm going to tack a, uh, the square groove butt joint up, and then I'll make a lap joint out of half of that. And I'm going to use my Leatherman tool again to snip the wire before I start tacking here. Once I got that tacked up, tack a lap joint onto half of that butt joint. And then I can, once I get all the tacks on that, I can tack the T-joint up. And I conserve a little bit of metal. It also uh, makes it a little bit of a bigger chunk of metal to draw the heat out. It won't overheat so much with all that welding. And I'll have to straighten that thing up before I weld it. It's a little bit crooked. Well, I've got it straightened up now. Before you weld any, any joint, especially if you're kind of new to welding, it's good to take a few dry runs, figure out how you're going to position your hands. Does it feel good to you? Can you make a weld of several inches without being in a jam, you know, or, or being constricted or hanging up on something that's on the table? So uh, I, take, I take dry runs even after welding for 30 some odd years. I still do it all the time. All right, here's the square groove weld. I'm just doing a little zigzag motion, play in the light. I, I probably wouldn't normally do this, but for the purpose of the Scout Merit Badge, it's probably a good idea if people are real new to welding just to do a little zigzag on that. This is just a straight line, and here's a straight line with a small gap in the, in the metal, which is probably the way it would be done in real, real life. That's welded. That needs to be welded both sides, and here's the T-joint also to be welded both sides. I'm just showing one side of it here. Again, using that little series of overlapping cursive E's or U's or small overlapping circles. There's, you know, whatever you want, you want to describe it. But you can see I'm just making a very small little loop and it gives me a nice little pattern and puts a little ripple in the weld that some people like doesn't necessarily make it a better weld, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And then the lap joint is the last thing. Now here I'm just moving along at a steady pace, but you could also do those little series of little uh, circles. Works very well on this joint as well. And there's the lap joint and the T-joint, one side. Lap joint's on the bottom, T-joint's on the top. Now I was using a Hobart 210 MVP. I'm trying to use machines that uh, will be uh, likely to be in people's garages and shops. But this little Hobart, as, as like a lot of machines, has a little chart on the inside cover. It's got uh, settings, a good starting point, and you determine what metal you're welding, what gas you're using, the voltage, whether it's 230 or 115. In this case, this machine runs off either one. I'm using 030, 30 thousandths wire size, and I'm going to come over here, and for eighth inch, it recommends a 4 and 40 setting, but I'm going to set it at 5 and 50 because that's a setting for 3 16 and the tubing is a little thicker than 8th inch thick so 5 and 50 and that worked out actually very well actually pretty accurate one more thing make sure you got the right polarity I'm tracing the, the positive side here out and making sure that's the one connected to the block that is the electrode and so make sure you got electrode positive if you're doing bare wire MIG alright well that is it I hope this helps Thanks for watching and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.